Hi guys, and welcome back to my buckets. Uh, the last video that I made, you saw me making my own DIY safe lights for the darkroom, purely so you guys can see more of what I'm doing when I'm working in the darkroom. And that was inspired by Instagrammer Film Love Photography. I got it right this time. And I decided to make mine out of orange buckets and a red fire, fire glow bulb there, which is 60 watt. I thought it was 100 watt in the last video. I said it at 100, it's not. I've looked at it, it's actually a 60 watt bulb. So it uh, wasn't as bright as I thought it was. But um, yeah, so I went ahead and made my own safe lights, as you saw. So although I was really happy with the outcome of the bucket lights and the tests that I did as well that proved that they were safe to use in the darkroom, I was a little tiny bit concerned about the red fire glow bulb that I was using inside the buckets. The buckets were getting slightly, not hot, but they were getting quite warm. And the foam inside, that was not really getting warm. It was just warm to, to touch, so that was quite safe. But then I did get paranoid because one of your comments from uh, Mr. Casey Face, it read, the s Flab bucket light. Get yours today for three easy payments of $39.99. But wait, there's more. If you order within the next 30 minutes, we'll send you a phone back in to hold your lamp so your darkroom can catch on fire. Thanks, mate. So after that, I went off to the store and I thought, I'm gonna get these LED bulbs sooner than later. Just got me a bit paranoid, really. And I, I couldn't find any red ones. So I was a little bit stuffed in the store and I asked, have you got any red LED bulbs? And they said, no, we don't. We've only got the ones I've already got. And I just thought, no, I want LED ones. So uh, I kind of had, had a thought. And there's another comment that I got from the last video, which was from Henline, which read, when I first started printing, I successfully used a rare cycle light, one of the ordinary cheap ones, but they do need batteries. Now I have a small Patterson darkroom light. I wonder if painted bulbs would work, if they were low wattage. I've used acrylic paints on bulbs before, it dries quickly and easy to use, but I think you would need two or three coats to get an even coating that obliterated the brush marks and therefore didn't let any of the white light through. So Henline, thanks very much for that comment because I did exactly just that. I went off, uh, I was in the same store and I said, have you got any spray paint? I said, yeah, what's it for? Um, I said, my dark, <laughs> dark room. <laughs> Uh, a light bulb and they pointed me to stained glass. Now this actually was a result because it was £5.99 reduced to £3.95 and that's the stuff that I got there. It's nearly gone because I've already used it. I've already sprayed the bulbs and I did a few coats and they're sitting inside the buckets now and then I went on and did some tests and I was quite happy. Uh, I still needed to use the three buckets, uh, that wasn't going to change but uh, I was quite happy now that I've got LED lights inside my buckets and they're not hot at all to touch. Fantastic. And that's one of the things I like about making these videos and having this channel is, is the interaction that I can get with you guys. The comments come in, I read them, I learn from them, and I know that other people do as well. And some of the con comments on that last video was quite interesting, especially about LED bulbs. Uh, people were bantering on about that they use LED, LED strips and bulbs uh, that you can get now, uh, mainly online. I haven't seen any in the stores, but I live out in the sticks, so why would I? But uh, I'll just read some of the comments that, uh, that interested me. And I have to put my glasses on here, guys, to read. In fact, they're not mine, they're my wife's glasses. I couldn't find my reading glasses, don't they look pretty? Now, I apologise if I'm not saying these names right. Uh, Philip Kiddoz, he said, uh, another great video. I use RGB LEDs I got from Amazon. Left a piece of paper out for 10 minutes of their highest red brightness and the paper developed pure white. We'll get onto that in a moment. We'll do some tests to see if that really does cut the mustard with the test I was doing. Uh, and it was £20 and very bright. Uh, so thanks very much, Philip, for that comment. So Stefan Dolberg says, I was planning to just diffuse some red LEDs. Am I missing something? Are safe lights more specific? Well, if you check out one of the YouTubers that I follow, which is Top Ship Photography, a great channel, the guy's so experienced, have a look in his darkroom, and he's using some red LEDs, I believe, around his working area, where it looks like red LEDs to me. So uh, check out his YouTube channel. Maybe you can stick a comment on there and ask, it yourself um, about that question. Another comment from Guillermo Perez Santos. Uh, a humble LED strip will make the job. Get an RGB strip and set it to red. So maybe that answers uh, the, the last question. I think the strips and, 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 and what Stefan was saying are, are the same sort of thing. Harry Stevens says, I use a remote colored control LED light bulb. Set it on red and dim if you want, it works a treat. Nearly forgot I quite like the bucket style. Could you add a dimmer control? I could add a dimmer control to it, um, but now I've got those LEDs, uh, they're not getting hot. I've tested them, they're safe, so I'm quite happy with, with, with what I've got there. But great, great question, good comment. 
And another comment from Street Photo Hunt, he said, can I make a video about a DIY grain focuser? So yeah, I started on that and I tried it out. I'm still in the early stages of, of, of getting the prototype done, but uh, this is it here. And once I get a lens in now, I can start experimenting and see how I get on with it. My mate Peter Elgar says, I'm glad to see you're using the large darkroom clock that I gave you. Keep snapping, Pete. It's behind me, mate, and I really do appreciate you giving me that clock. It's fantastic. It works like a treat. And uh, I've been using it ever since you gave me, so top man. Uh, if you haven't seen Peter Elgar's YouTube channel, I'll leave a description in the... In the, in the uh, I'll leave a link in the description. You know what I'm talking about. Clive Vincent also made a comment, and he said, I'm enjoying your innovative darkroom ideas. If you were to paint your darkroom white, you would find it much brighter uh, as the neutral white would reflect the color of the safe light. A dark room doesn't have to be black as long as it is light, tight. Keep up the great work, keep analog alive. Um, yeah, I, I see your point about that, about having a white dark room, and I've seen other dark rooms that are white as well. Um, <laughs> my eyes have got all funny now. My wife's glasses are strong. And, uh, I'm going to keep it as it is, but thanks very much, Clive, for the comment. I really do appreciate it, but um, I'm not going to start painting it up now. If it works for me as it is, then that's good enough, but uh, a good comment and good idea. And a few other comments that I got, which is what I'm going to get onto now, um, which is what I should have done in the first video we showed you guys, was using the coin trick on a piece of paper. People were saying uh, you can put a, a coin on a piece of photographic paper, turn the red lights on for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever. And if you can see a difference, then your red lights are, are not safe. If you don't see any difference and the paper comes out pure white, your red lights are safe. Well, I did try that in, uh, I didn't put it on the video, but I did try that during when I was testing these. And my sensitized paper test was actually showing that my darkroom lights were not safe. And the coin test was showing that they were safe. And I suppose it makes sense because when you're in a dark room and you're making prints, the first thing you're going to do is sensitize the paper on the enlarger with the with projecting your negative onto the paper. And then you start doing your dodging, your burning, and your 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 developing, stop and fix, and your wash. And during that time, the red lights are on in the dark room. So I found that by sensitizing the paper first. I was getting different results to the coin test. And that's what I'm going to get onto now. I'm just going to show you guys what I was doing. I'm going to put a coin test head to head in here with, um, with the sensitized paper test. And I'll let you guys decide uh, which, which way you think is best or which is going to work for you. I know which one works for me. It's definitely going to be the sensitized paper. So we'll get on with that now. So at the moment, I've got my three buckets over the light and I know that that's safe, but I'm going to take one away, which I know isn't safe. On what from my test that's why I had the third bucket so I've taken one away it's made it a little bit brighter and we're going to do our coin test on this so what I'm going to do I'm going to first of all sensitize a piece of paper for three seconds and that's my first strip that's the one that I was doing in the last video and then I'm going to take another piece of paper next to it and uh, place I haven't got a coin actually so I'm just going to use a bar I'll place a metal bar over it and so I have two tests going on, uh, the one test that I use and the coin test as well. So uh, let's get on with that, turn all the lights off. So you can see straight away how much illuminations I've got going on in the dark room. This area over here is brighter than this area. So I'm going to use this area for, the, for my testing. I might have to move this bucket light away actually so this is more even. But uh, let's turn all the lights off. I'm first of all, I'm going to get a, a piece of test strip here and project three seconds onto it. So we'll turn all the darkroom lights off for a second while I'm doing that. A bit tricky, I have to do this in the dark. I'm going to leave that one over in the corner there, just so I can see. So there's the first one. I'm going to sensitize that for three seconds. And place that under there like so. And now I'll get the second piece of paper and place the bar over it. Just like that. And now I'm going to turn all my lights back on, red lights back on. And set the timer for four minutes, the same time I was doing my test earlier. In fact, I'll do it for five minutes. I can't find my switch now. There it is. And the one behind me. Now set the clock. We'll go for five minutes.
Okay, so the two test strips are now in a fix. I can turn my red light back on now. You can see them there. So that's the sensitized paper, that's the coin test. Right, that should be fixed. I'm going to turn all the lights on. That's the, there's a wash there. You can see a difference there. So this is my sensitized paper test and I knew it would fail because I only, I only used two buckets, I took the third one off, the third one makes it safe. So you can see that's the sensitized part, let's turn the other light on actually, <laughs> it didn't make no difference. You can see that's the sensitized part that I did for the three seconds and that is what the red light did over five minutes and that's the coin trick or the the coin test if i just uh squeegee that one off if i was just to use that if i was just to use that there that's telling me that my my um safe lights are safe but from this test is telling me that it's not safe. And I would more so believe this because when I'm in here print, making prints, of course I'm gonna sensitize the paper because I'm making a print and then I put it in the developer stop and fix. Uh, whereas this hasn't been sensitized whatsoever. It's just a, a piece of paper sitting in the dark room with the lights on. So I'll just show you the results from that last test. That's the sensitized paper with five minutes. And that's the coin test paper for five minutes exactly the same position that is telling me that my safe lights are safe that's telling me otherwise and I then went on to do the same test with 15 minutes and that's after 15 minutes I didn't go on longer than that because uh, I must admit it was really bo really boring test to do and that's after 15 minutes so, I mean, with this after 15 minutes, that would have been a lot darker. I didn't go that far. Um, and then I put the third bucket on, same test, uh, five minutes with the, with the uh, third bucket on. And you can see the red light didn't affect the light grey whatsoever compared to two buckets. So that's it, I'm done with uh, testing these buckets. I'm quite happy that they're safe now uh, for me to use in the darkroom and give you guys more light when I'm making my videos. And uh, the only thing I've changed this time is I'm, I'm happy that I've, I've got some cooler LEDs running inside there so the buckets aren't getting uh, nowhere near as warm as they were. And I'm quite pleased, Casey, that they're not a fire hazard, mate. And I've also took Henline's uh, comment on board and sprayed the LED lights with some stained glass window red spray. And that seems to work quite well after my test. So I'm really happy with these. Guys, thanks very much for all the comments and, the, and, the, and, your, and your contributions towards the last video. It really did help me and I hope it's helped others as well. And just by running that little tiny coin test that I did, um, you know, do your own tests. See, see for yourself how it works for you. For me personally, I prefer to do the sensitized test. And I'm no technician when it comes to all this. I'm just looking at it saying, well, I've got a different result to that. Uh, and that's 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 where I'm coming from. There was another comment from Boris. He's been a long time subscriber and he's often uh, commenting on my videos. And uh, it was a little bit over my head, to be honest with you, mate, when I was <laughs> reading the comment. Um, he said, how about trying to find some LED which uh, emit light in a wavelength range above the spectral sensitivity of the paper, but still below the threshold of infrared? It would take some research and a few peaks and technical data sheets for the paper you use, but it might work. For example, Kentmere VC has a spectral sensitivity cutoff point of around 550 nm. I think that's nanometers. Uh, so everything above that should do no harm. 
In theory, you could then literally flood the, your dark room with light without any danger of fogging the paper. It could prove to be an affordable and effective solution. So I think I'll give it a try in future months. So boys, thanks very much, mate, for that comment. I think in time, um, I might have a little look into that and make my, dark, make my dark room a lot brighter because I kind of understand where you're coming from. But um, when you start talking about nanometers and, and spectral sensitivity wavelengths, it's kind of a little bit above me, mate, but um, I'll get there eventually, I hope. So anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching this video and watching the last video. And I really do appreciate the comments that you've thrown into the last video because it's helped me get these safe lights to where I want to be. And also by doing that little coin test um, challenge, if, if you like, uh, maybe some people have found it interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it all wrong. Let me know if I am, because I really would like to know. Anyway, guys, thanks very much. And I'll catch you next time. this video please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one